In our last video, we talked about the analysis of microplastic by FPA imaging. To continue this important topic, I want to talk to you about the chemical mapping of microplastic found in drinking water, sea or table salt, or on beaches and rivers. We used a sea salt sample and dissolved it in distilled water. Afterwards, it was filtered through an aluminum oxide filter. The filter was placed in a specialized setup and a vacuum pump was used to speed up the filtration process. When the filtration was done, the filter was placed in an oven at moderate temperature. For the analysis, the filter was placed in a filter holder and onto the microscopy stage. Okay, we're now ready for the single point mapping analysis of our sample that has already been put on the stage of the LUMOS2 FTIR microscope. This approach is most suited for samples with a low load of particles, like for the analysis of drinking water. The LUMOS2 is equipped with up to three detectors, and for this analysis we're using the thermoelectrically cooled MCT detector that does not require liquid nitrogen, but still can detect particles down to 10 microns. In FTIR microscopy, it's very important to always have a good view of your sample. This is why we're using this dual monitor setup, where you always see your sample on this screen and where you do the workflow on the other screen. To show you the benefit of FTIR mapping, I will collect an overview image of a part of the sample, but you could of course also collect an overview image of the whole filter. Okay, now we have selected the TEMCT and already collected a background and now we need to set measurement pots on our particles. We can either do this manually by just clicking on them and adjusting the aperture in size as well as in rotation to exclude any information from the background. But because this is quite time consuming, if you would do it for all the particles, we have the find particles feature that will find them for you. To adjust the fine particles function to your sample, you can adjust the threshold in which an object is recognized based on visual contrast, and you can also invert the image. In the second step, you define a minimum as well as a maximum object size. This means particles smaller than 50 microns and larger than 2000 microns are not found by the functionality. You can of course adjust this to any value you like but we are going to stick with 50 and 2000 to show you the selectivity of the feature. This also means this large fiber here will not show up in the final result. Found particles are shown in different colors and larger objects like this fiber and smaller particles are not selected due to the size restrictions we have set. So now all that is left to do is select sample name and measure the sample. When the measurement is done, you are directed to the chemical imaging window. On the right hand side, you see an overview over all the measurement spots and you can deselect and select them simply by clicking on them. When you click on a spot, the spectrum will be displayed in the color corresponding to the spot. On the left hand side, you see a chemical image generated by the integration of the CH region. If we want to identify a particle, we can simply click on it and perform a library search. From the result, we can clearly see that this particle is polyethylene. Now, if we were to do this for all the particles that are on here, it would be quite time consuming. This is why we developed MPID, an automated evaluation routine for particle statistics. MPID stands for microparticle identification and is Bruker's onboard solution for the chemical analysis, size evaluation, and statistical distribution of microparticles. To open MPID, simply click on the button in the icon bar and you will be shown this window. We have loaded a predefined method for our sample, but you can define your own methods for your day-to-day -day routine. Additionally, you can adjust the number of size divisions. Since our sample is very diverse, we're gonna take a few more and click Analyze. The result of the analysis is shown in the report window. 
On the first column, you have an overview over the material that is included in the method. This is just a small example, and you can add as many materials as you like. On the top row, you see the size distribution, and for this sample, you can see that most particles are smaller than 100 micrometers and are identified as polyurethane. Now that we have our statistics, the analysis is done. I hope I could show you how easy and convenient it is to analyze microplastic particles on a filter with the LUMOS FTIR microscope and the tools that come with it.